One viewer wrote in the comments of a previous video that you can use a 555 as a MOSFET driver. That made me really curious, so I tried and it worked better than expected. So, in this video I will show you how to abuse a NE555 timer IC as a MOSFET driver. Why do we need a MOSFET driver? Well, MCUs like your Arduino only deliver logic level signals of 3.3 or 5 volts at maybe 20 milliamps. To effectively drive power MOSFETs, you need about 12 volts and enough current to charge the gate fast enough. In this video, I will explain, build and test the circuit to its limits. Let me start by explaining how it works. Here you see the schematic of the 555 hooked up as a MOSFET driver. Pin 2, trigger, is connected to the ground. Pin 6, threshold, is connected to the 12 volt. This way the output will go high by default. Pin 4, the reset pin, is connected to the Arduino PWM output. The reset pin can override all the other inputs. If the reset pin is higher than 0.7 volt, the output on pin 3 will be 12 volt. If the reset is lower than 0.7 volt, the output pin 3 will be 0 volt. So the input can work with standard logic levels from 1.8 to 5 volts. The output will deliver 12 volt at 200 milliamps to drive the MOSFET gate. Now let's build this circuit and see how it works. To test the circuit, I connected a 24 volt power supply and a 60 watt load resistor. I also added a diode on the output to protect the MOSFET against inductive spikes from the wiring. I used an NPN and a 12 volt Zener diode to make a small 12 volt power supply. The NE555 needs about 10 mA to work, which is actually quite a lot. Here is the circuit. As you see, not so many components. Here you see the 555, and here it's connected to the Arduino GPIO 9. And here is the IRFZ44 MOSFET. Here is the 24 volt. The load resistor is connected between those two wires, and this is the ground going to the 24 volt power supply. Now let's power it up. Here you see the signals on the oscilloscope. The yellow line is the PWM signal of the Arduino. It's 100 kHz at 50% duty cycle. The blue line is the output between ground and the MOSFET drain. Let's check the timings. The switch on delay is a bit hard to see with this cheap oscilloscope, but it seems around 100 nanoseconds. The switch off delay is a little longer. It's about 180 nanoseconds. Let's increase the frequency. Two hundred kilohertz. It's okay. Five hundred kilohertz. That still looks good. Now let's go to one megahertz. Okay, that's not so nice anymore, but it's still working. After several minutes of operation at 500 kHz, the MOSFET gets a little warm. So the 555 is a decent MOSFET driver. It is cheap. It is fast. We've seen it can work up to 500 kHz. It's very easy to get. You probably even have some lying around somewhere. 
and it's non-inverting. So if the input goes high, the MOSFET is on. One disadvantage is that it's quite power hungry. It needs 10 mA to work. When you select your 555 timer, please make sure you select the bipolar version. The NE555 and LM555 are OK. They can sync and source 200 mA. The CMOS types, like the TLC555 or LMC555, can source only 10 mA, so these are not suitable to drive a MOSFET. Please check the specification of the 555 chip that you have. As mentioned, the NE555 and LM555 are good. You can also find more information in the Wikipedia link in the description. Altogether, a very good and simple MOSFET driver. Not bad for a chip from 1971. I hope this video was useful for you. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. And leave your experience in the comments.